welcome to my series about Sopen Mazurkas. Today, a very happy Mazurka D major, Opus 33, number 3. Uh, this Mazurka is extremely famous. And um, we have here a, a happy Chopin, definitely Chopin in his, uh, in his good times, um, already with short star and inspired and with better health and Chopin who just wants to uh, wants to party I would say we have here the impression of the composer who composed a music especially for dancing and uh, mind you this was also important for Polish emigrants and Polish people generally speaking who were living in Paris and they were missing their country and uh, well as you know that time there were no live music i mean sorry no recordings so only live music uh, and if people wanted to have the impression that they are in their homeland they they listened to the f music but it was very difficult in paris to listen to polish music there were not some not there were no po folk polish groups really there so when Chopin wrote mazurkas like this this was very important for for all the poles definitely uh, let's listen to a little bit and find out what's so special about it <laughs> So this is the this is the whole mazurka. Uh, it's so much fun to play it, although it's I would say it's extremely difficult pianistically. I don't know if you hear that. Well, if you are a pianist, you know what I mean. If you are not a pianist, I want I explain to you the difficulty of this mazurka. So the melody we hear is is it seems very simple, and and of course it's very easy to play. very easy to play it would be easy to play if there would be no uh, down voice the lower voice in the same hand thumb has to play has to play the, the another uh, voice and that makes it very difficult because it makes it uh, we, we, we have to use fingers three four five so it's like this attitude. 
which is one of the most difficult etudes uh, written by Chopin. Uh, three, four, five, they are fingers which are very uncomfortable to play. But in fact, uh, of course, it has to be practiced, but um, um, this etude uh, number two helps a lot to play this mazurka well. But I personally think this mazurka uh, doesn't need to be played very fast. And here comes the problem, which I want to talk a little bit about, the problem of piano competitions in general, and especially Chopin piano competition. Uh, of course, well, the, what is the problem? If we listen to old pianists, like for example, Arthur Rubinstein or Henrik Stompka, who played the mazurkas very well, um, uh, pianists who didn't really take part in any competitions because they didn't have to, I personally think they take the most out of these pieces because they don't think about competing and they don't think about uh, impressing the jury. They, they, they don't, don't think that they must impress the jury and they have to show their technique and they have to get as many points as possible. Uh, why this is so bad for the music in my opinion there are a few pieces like this one or like ballad number four which i found um, this behavior gives them a lot of harm uh, i found that when it, well i listened to a few pianists in chopin competition playing this mazurka you can do it of course we have it on youtube and all of them played so fast and they they show how good technique they have the problem is that this is not the attitude and but of course I understand them, because they are afraid that if they play it slower, then the jury will give them less points, because the jury will think that, oh, the, he doesn't have technique, or this is too slow. So, but what Chopin would think, we don't know. But in my opinion, when I hear Rubinstein, and when you open on YouTube his, his uh, interpretation of this mazurka, this is probably the best. This is the best interpretation of this mazurka and simply because he is free and he just, he knew how to dance and he imagined people dancing. When you play too fast, people cannot dance so fast. So this is Oberek. So another, another um, challenge for the pianist here is to make a mazurka rhythm. And in here we have the challenge on the left hand. We have to use this we have to make the slayer between one and two and then go up and three play a little bit later because this is the uh, the image um, of uh, of string players and they play uh, they go up they go down then up and then they they take up the hand and they go down again one pa 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 I hope you you can imagine that. And so we have. It ha in this mazurka, I think it has to be do all the time, but not all the time exactly the same. W there are places where we can do it more, and there are places when we can do it less. Um, and and uh, let's 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 hear a little bit different tempis, and let's find the good tempo for for dancing this mazurka. Of course, another thing we have here is the forte piano. Uh, this is very uh, easy to catch. We have the one phrase very loud and then one phrase very piano pianissimo. Um, and um, but before we focus on this. Um, I I want to try some another tempi. Well, this this is a little bit too too slow, maybe. But what I played. Uh, fast so I think uh, that there's something in the middle <laughs> uh, 
something in the middle is good. And now this forte and piano. Okay, here we, we have this dilemma. We can consider uh, forte as a dance in, in the party in the countryside, in some some folk uh, restaurant, let's say. Uh, but we can also, and, and the piano, pianissimo, we can consider as a dance in in some kind of house of the high class aristocratic uh, people, uh, aristocracy. And then we have to differentiate the phrasing and our attitude and our imagination. So the first must be very rough and vulgar and, you know, how like in a very good heavy folk party. And then we have the aristocracy. And again. This is one way of, of thinking. But another way of thinking, which uh, probably is closer to what Chopin wanted, is that in the first time everything is in the folk restaurant, in the folk uh, party. And everything is very rough, and vulgar and uh, just a pure dance uh, played by folk musicians. Um, and like a wild dancing, it's really wild. And when it comes to the, the second time, after all the middle section we have, then it's uh, aristoc aristocracy, it's a saloon, it's a more the saloon. So we have the co co comparison of the vulgar folk dancing and the saloon dancing. Why I think it's uh, closer? Well, because uh, we have the letters of um, some, um, some, some pianists who met the student of Chopin, uh, one lady, Mrs. Czartoryska, and she, she he asked her to play for him. And she was very old at that time. Uh, but So she said, oh, my fingers doesn't work, but okay, I play for you. And she played this very mazurka. And then when she played this mazurka, he noticed that the first time she played very, you know, very heavy, very vulgar, very ugly in a way and the second time suddenly she was making a lot of beautiful phrasing rubato and she was very uh, very like chopin like so he asked her why why you are doing this then she said to him this is how chopin was saying chopin was saying that the first time is very folk uh, rough and vulgar uh, folk group and the second time is like a salon music so this is the challenge, right? I oh, I love this story because it seems it seems true. And now we have the same theme, but we have to do it different, completely differently, playing the same notes, but using our imagination and ideas to make it different. So, of course, left hand is important. Left hand, when we play it in a vulgar way, we have to we need to uh, do it very loud. <laughs> The second time, so and this piano, I love to imagine that we are inside this folk restaurant, and the first time the door uh, is open. hear the people dancing uh, and the, a, a very loud music but then when comes the piano somebody closed the door so we still hear the same music but the door is closed listen again to play it is so in a such a rough way piano pianissimo because when we play piano pianissimo immediately we want to play more beautiful but here I think beautiful is not a good word for this
So we have to imagine that this is Forte, but very far away. This is somebody playing very loud and very wild, but far away. I tell you, it's really difficult. So uh, when I practice that, I love to do it like this. I play Forte very much and then I slowly do less and less and less and less, but I don't uh, change the spirit of the melody. this moment people when they are dancing they are kicking the floor you know pa 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 they are doing the boom with their shoes so change if you are a musician you know from D major which has two sharp two sharps we come to two flats which is B major it doesn't work but suddenly we have here and we change but the same the same that the note D which was the main note in D major change to be the the number three note in B major, so the third. And here well, we have another another moment, which our imagination also have a lot of options. Here we can hear something more like a woman, more like uh, charming. And then the dance. Maybe that's like it is. Maybe this is the woman who who comes in the middle of the circle in the party and dance there and says Then all the group of people are shouting. They are shouting. And again she and again the group. Here we have this is a very interesting moment. I call it no music. There is no music. There is no melody, no phrase, no phrase. Well, the phrase we can say there is a phrase, but in fact there is no music. There is all the time the same. And we can play like this all day, many hours. We can play. And it's very nice to dance on the, for this music. try to make more gentle more more elegant more elegant way of playing it and this must be fascinating and the work on this is very but I love to practice this uh, elegant way uh, much uh, slower and change the touch and change my feeling and then go faster and faster <laughs> Of 
we have to change the balance between the melody and the accompaniment. Between this the folk group and somebody dancing. In this in this elegant way of playing, the salon playing, the, the, the woman dancing must be um, on the top. And here also, maybe it's a good idea not to exaggerate the mazurka rhythm. Uh, so that we we don't have this uh, this rough drunk party, you know, but more the salon, more refined. suddenly comes the new melody and here the melody is the, the lower voice and the upper voice keeps the note so again a little bit pianistically demanding I play it slower Fantastic. This is the typical Polish folk scale. And everything ends like, you know, like the, the bubble. We have the bubble, then suddenly pick or the balloon and everything finish there. This is the end. So, and this is a little bit the same phrase. So it's here we, it seems like Chopin forgot everything what was before. And now suddenly we have the reminiscence of the beginning. So everything is connected, uh, connected together. Such a happy, such a cheerful uh, mazurka, probably the, 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 the most folk mazurka of all, especially from the later opuses, not, not this opus 6, opus 7, as you remember, they were all uh, very folk. Then we had uh, Chopin, who is changing to write more the diary, more... He, he, he doesn't focus on writing music for dancing or music for making somebody happy, but uh, he considers mazurkas as, uh, well, mazurkas as somebody who he talks to and he express him, himself, he express his soul and in his soul usually there were a lot of bad feelings. And in this mazurka, again, we have completely cha changed man who is suddenly happy and wants to make other people happy with his music. I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode and I invite you to the next one about mazurka, uh, opus 33, number 4, which Chopin himself was called ballad. So this is not really a mazurka, it's more like a ballad. So there will be there is a challenge in um, in the interpretation of this masterpiece. See you soon. Bye bye.